the future of workplace safety, how HSC management systems can transform your business. Um, first and foremost, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Nyangoro Ho, uh, Communications Officer at Solutions Consulting Company Limited. Um, with me uh, are Judith Macha and Humphrey Kengia uh, from Solutions Star Consulting Company Limited. Um, Solutions Star Company Limited uh, is an integrated uh, oil and gas service company and uh, we offer a range of services. Um, HSC, just like how we, 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 we have these engagements, is one of our core services that we do offer here. But we also offer training courses, um, which can be customized, but we also have our training calendar. Um, we also offer various technical services in the oil and gas sector. So that is a solution stack in brief. So you are warmly welcome. This is part of us sharing what we have internally. And I hope we're going to learn a lot from Ms. Judith Macha, who is an HSC solutions coordinator uh, from Solutions Stack Consulting Company Limited. Uh, not to have so, many, so much words, I would like to welcome Ms. Judith directly to begin walking us through the today's webinar. Ms. Judith, you're all welcome. Thank you, Nyangoro. And welcome everybody to our session today, where we are going to discuss about the future of workplace safety, to see how how can HSC management system transform your business? Surely I'm excited to welcome you all to this session and we'll be discussing a number of things. We'll be discussing the importance of having this HSC management system. But again, we will see how, what are the key elements uh, that are constituting the HSC management systems and we will also see some practical application of how and where it can be applied and some of the standards that we have uh, that are guiding in HSC management system. I hope we will all see, find this session fruitful. Of course, we will find this session um, important, uh, informative and engaging. And for our today's session, I'd like everyone of us to, 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 to be here to engage to have something to say. I hope we'll all have something to add in. So we'll be in the, uh, in the middle of the session. I'll be welcoming some of the people who have something to add in to the session today. Yep, so let's hit the ground running to see HSC management system. And the, let us understand when we speak of HSC management system, what do we really mean? So this is a comprehensive framework that is being used by an organizations, uh, companies, industries to, to make sure they prevent, they mitigate, or they eliminate whatever kind of disruption or losses that can be happening into their workplace. Uh, and that can, can cause the accident, the risk, the hazard, and whatever environmental phenomena that uh, can be can bring losses to their workplace. So this framework is basically there to make sure there is no accident, no risk, no hazard exposure, no any negative environmental phenomena that can be happening into that workplace. So having this HSC management system, it's basically serve as the key to make sure you monitor the, the organization compliance with respect to health, safety, and the environment. And this one, we make sure they comply to whatever laws, standards, or regulations that are applicable into their area. And seeing this, this is why we say it's very important for an organization or a company to make sure that they have the strong HSC management system at their workplace. It's very, very important to make sure you have the strong system because this is what will define whatever kind of compliance and whatever degree of health, safety, and environment that you are having at your workplace. 
Let us see what are the importance of and having. Then we must print them. Let's see the, what are the importance of having this HSC management system of oh, this is this system at your workplace. So as I said, this system it's specifically the, the, the importance or the specific benefits of this system. They revolve around the area of uh, moral, legal and financial obligation that have been held by an organization. So this one can help you to ensure that you have the documented and again the implemented policies in place. So you have the, the you have the policies in place and you make sure that you implement them because as we'll see in the key elements of these systems, they are part which are require monitoring. So you cannot monitor something which you have not implemented. So you make sure instead of just documenting them, but they are also implemented and uh, are reviewed and they are updated as time to time. But again, this system uh, in, in, improve employees' welfare because uh, for you to have uh, a good production or to have uh, efficient productivity, you have to provide a safe workplace to your employees. Now, this system help you to help you to improve the the workplace or to, to make sure you have the safe workplace for your employees but not only for you as an employer or as a leader into that organization but this one also in the same way as it it, it make you set a safe workplace it also puts some expectation to your employees to make sure that they take charge of their own safety in the workplace so with this one they you, you might you have um some requirements to your employees that are telling them what are they supposed to do or how are they supposed to behave in a way that they will not put their own health or the other people health at risk when they are working into that uh, workplace but as you, we said if you have a uh, responsible, the employees knows what are they supposed to do in terms uh, of safety, health and environment. You find yourself that you prevent some personal and com company financial loss because if somebody got an injury into the workplace, then this person might be liable to financial losses they need to attain for medication. Sometimes if they lost part of their body, then they sometimes lose the job. They, and of course, you find there are some people who are depending on him. So there are some financial losses that can be contributed to that. But if they know what they're supposed to do, and if they have not faced any kind of danger, then you find that there is no losses that can be happening in terms of financial and you will be reducing the need or the, the, the attention to, to medication to your area. But not only that, having this system in place, as you will see into the, into the key elements, there's a part which is speak of the risk management. So you find you have the team, which is their main task is to, to perform a risk assessment to your area. So they every day come, and they see what can be the hazard and how they can present a risk to the workplace and they find a way to mitigate that risk to make sure they reduce it to as low as possible. So with this one, it will help to mitigate the risk related to the workplace, health and safety. But not only that, it also helps to promote uh, environmental sustainability. Having everything in place, right now we are moving in into ESG. So this system plays a key role to promote environmental sustainabilities. Right now, company don't only look on the profit they bring, but they also need, uh, or we also need to minimize whatever negative environmental impact that can be happening because of our work procedures or equipment or whatever system that we are having at our workplace and with this one we make sure that we we, we comply to whatever legislation or environmental aspect that may be touching our business as we operate so these ones are fused of the importance of hsc management system 
And let us now see what are the key elements that are constituting this HSC management system. As you can see into the picture, we have uh, 12, like 12 elements that are constituting HSC management system. And starting with one of them, uh, the control and communication of safety documents. So having the system in place, you have to define how do you communicate, how are the, the latest protocols, uh, systems, policies are being communicated within your organization or within your company. So the, the, the standards, uh, the regulations, the key safety documents that are required to your workplace has to be communicated. So with this one, it, it will have to explain to detail uh, on how you can access, how someone can access those information or how those gaps that have been uh, observed into the workplace can be reduced or someone need to understand what are the gaps that are happening and how they can reduce them into your workplace. So for example, in Tanzania or even across the world, we have some OSHA guidelines, Occupational Safety and Health Administration guidelines that require that you need to, to display HSC posters which aim to inform employees on their rights outlined in the OSHA Act. And of course, uh, some of the information, what are they supposed to do to make sure that we encourage their awareness and of course the compliance among the employees. So with this one, in this control and communication of safety document, you'll have to make sure all your employees knows what are they supposed to do in terms of safety and what are the company uh, rules or what is the company policy in terms of HAC so that they can act accordingly. So some of them, of course, this has been used as the basic way. We display them into the area where everyone can access them. But on the other hand, we can be using a cloud-based platform to store some of the important information on HSC management into the system where everyone can, can access them at a time. In the second element, second key element of HSC management system, it's basically the risk management, of course, of those HSC gu guidelines. So with this one, you basically focus on how can someone determine or how can someone analyze the risk into your workplace. But again, how can you man manage those risks into a workplace to make sure that you improve uh, or you, 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 you proactive uh, the culture of safety. So with this one, not only addressing the issues and incidents that uh, may arise or may happen into your workplace, but with this risk management, it's a broad umbrella which can also cover from uh, hazard identification, assessment of those hazards, and control of those hazards at your workplace. So to effectively identify the potential risk uh, at your work, knowing what kind of workplace hazard employees are exposed to, we need to let uh, HSC leaders or those uh, in charge of health safety environment has to, to know this and of course determine what are the next steps that you can be doing to make sure the the area is safe and everyone can work there and they reduce the risk to, to as low as possible. So they'll have to determine probably if it is required a change of management or if it is required a continuous improvement from there. So this risk management is what will tell us if we are supposed to go for change of management of systems or we are supposed to go for continuous improvement from this risk management, we will know. This, the third element is on emergency response planning and management. Uh, most of areas they call ERP, emergency response plan. So emergency response plan is basically the standard operating procedures which are acting on term of emergence, starting from the reporting, how can somebody report an emergence? The rescue operations, how are they supposed to be done? If there's any medical duties that can be required at that emergence to prevent, um, uh, these procedures are there to prevent that. 
there is no any unnecessary panic that can be happening in terms of emergence. So you are required to prepare an emergence preparedness and response to make sure that, um, and of course, after preparing it, you are supposed to make sure you are all the people, the staff, the employees, and even the employer, employer himself knows that plan so that in terms of uh, emergence, then they are you are sure that your people or all, all the people in there are equipped with all the necessary knowledge and of course the equipment to make sure that the effective they can deal with the emergence effectively so this is one among the very important yes we are we are not saying that the, all, every time we are not sure that uh, we're not saying that every time we will be having an emergence but it, it can happen at any time. So we need to have a plan that can guide us at that time of emergence. The fourth element is a documentation system. I usually say this, uh, if there is no records, then you have not done it or you don't have it. So nothing can beat a proper administration process when it's come to maintaining the function of HSC management system with good record keepings. So this one uh, pertain to how every program, every policy, uh, the standards uh, are being documented and are being organized within your organization. So when the times come that an organization might be needing to do some internal audit, uh, they might be needing to do some monitoring, it's very easy to do it if you have the records or if you have the document that tells you what was supposed to be done and what is missing. So it's, you just go there and see the records, probably it's an incident report and see what was supposed to be done and what is missing. And then from there, you will know what are the gaps, how can you close them in time? So it's very, very, very important to, have, to make sure you, you maintain the records you document everything uh, from the policies um, and all the documents that you need to have uh, in HSC in with relating to HSC. But after having the documentation, now we have the documentation and everything in place where the documentation will tell us what uh, we are supposed to do and how to do it. The fifth element is on monitoring and measurement of those guidelines. So with this one, we are now going to monitor how effective does our system work or how effective does our system perform. So we might have some performance metrics in place that can be telling us, for example, we have uh, the lost term injury rate, the total case incident rate, uh, the medical injury rate, and so forth. So you, you are keeping some metrics that you'll be using to monitor. If we have say probably we are supposed to have the maximum of LTI equal to three, then you are while you are documenting them as they happen, at the end of a time you can have a time to, to you have the base of what you are supposed to do from your document and then you have what has been happening and you are trying to see okay I said I'm supposed to have three and now I'm having five. What is wrong? And what can I do? Can, am I supposed to change something? Am I supposed to improve something? So it's very important to make sure that you monitor those guidelines as you present it into your system or into your documentation. It's very important. So with this one, you, you might find you have the number of inspections at your workplace. You have the number of data that you are supposed to, to, to monitor, to go through them, to review them, to make sure that in this process, we monitor whatever that we are planning to have at your workplace. But this all cannot be done by um, just nobody. So you need to have a HSC team to work and act in place. So you find this has been uh, as a sixth element into the system, this appointment of HSC system. You need to have a person or the group of people that are dedicated to this work. So you have, uh, you need to have HSC leaders, HSC managers, HSC advisors or coordinators, and even HSC committee, which they are, they are being targeted, or their, their key function is to make sure that all that was being planned in terms of health, safety, and environment are being implemented into your organization. So their, their great role 
must be focusing on preventing the workplace accident and the injuries that can be happening and they need to have the key KPI, the key performance indicators in place to make sure how are they helping the company to achieve a safer working environment. So you need to have a team dedicated specifically for only this part. And then um, the third element, the, the seven element is on compliance management. As we, we know, a single non-compliance, non uh, of course, can, call, can lead to a serious financial liability. Of course, can damage your organization reputation, of course, can disrupt operations. Uh, of course, sometimes you may lose the equipment, the people the, that you are, you, are, you are working with every day. So when you are, you are dealing with this HSC management system, you may you need to, to make sure that you assess yourself to make sure you are in a good move. Now, and with this compliance check, sometimes you might need a, a third part to determine the level of compliance can be good uh, for, for, for your workplace. Sometimes the same person who is doing the work to assess the level of compliance can be, of course, uh, they might overlook some of the areas Maybe sometimes they're involved into that uh, particular gap, so they might overlook it. So we recommend to to involve a third party to check the compliance of uh, the compliance level of your workplace. The eighth element is, of course, on the role of accountability in leadership commitment. You might have everything in place. But if the leaders or if the administrator are not accountable and commit, uh, have not commit themselves to make sure they have the safe working environments, it will be nothing. So with this system, it also has to define how does your management or how does your administration commit itself to make sure they have a safe working environment? What are their goals? What are their objectives? with respect to health, safety and environment. And this one has to be clearly defined so that everyone can have a clear understanding of their individual roles and accountability with respect to health, safety and environment. And this one can be done sometime by writing up the policies that are of course outlined the standard operating procedures, uh, the agreement that have been agreed with the administrators or the managers to make sure that they they produce a safe working environment so the same way even the employers they have to to consider including the workers hsc duties into their job description so when you are um, let's say you are an employer and you want to employ someone to to to, to ensure accountability their accountability with respect to health safety and environment sometimes of course, in this is uh, supposed to be the, the the methodology of employing people. You need to 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 add or to include their health, safety, and environment duties with respect to the job they're supposed to do. So, as they come, they know what are they supposed to do, how are they supposed to act, so that you make sure we we enforce their ac accountability and the commitment to make sure they produce a safe environment and this one also has to be accompanied by the discipline action as needed so if somebody violates what is supposed to be done then some measures has to be taken against that person to make sure that everyone are committed to, to ensure they have a safe working environment now the ninth element is on review we always say that the hazard or the risk into the workplace change with time. So as it change, you need to be holding um, a review meetings after times. You need to schedule to arrange the review minute, the review meetings to check. Of course, this is a check and balance. You check what was planned and if it is still hold up to that time. So you need to review from the policies, uh, the system, the documents, everything that was highlighted you need to 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 to, to review it to see 
are they still applicable up to date? Are they effective? Or there somewhere that they missed something? Is there a gap, some gap somewhere? So with this review, is where you can come with the continuous improvements. So you need to review. Probably an event uh, has been happening to your area. You have an incident. You need to conduct a root cause analysis to see what is the root of this accident happening into our place and see was this incorporated into our system? Was this incorporated into our policy? And if not, then incorporate it. If it was incorporated, then what went wrong? Where the gap? Do you need to strengthen it? Do you need to improve it to some degree to make sure that thing was, will not happen again? But sometimes you need to perform um, a job hazard analysis or job safety analysis to see the jobs you are having. Probably the way you are operating prior is not the same as you are operating now. So you need to, to perform a job hazard analysis to see what are the risks? Probably I couldn't see them at the first time, and now I see them. And you incorporate them into your HSC policy and plans to make sure that you have a safe working environment. The tenth element is on training and education. Of course, you need to carry out um, HSC trainings which aims to keep the teams and workers informed. Of course, not only being informed, but well prepared and of course skilled at addressing some of the emergency situation, some of the accidents and other hazards that can be happen. People need to know if I'm working into this area, this can be the possible hazard. And don't think that if you have trained them, probably in, let's say today in 2023, the same you will train them in 2030. Of course, there is technological change. There are things that change already. So if the things has changed, even the hazard has changed. So if the hazard has changed, these people need to be informed of what hazard, what the new hazard has happening. If not informed, but need to be reminded that the this thing that can be happening at our place. And if it's happened, how are we supposed to act into that emergency situation? Or how are we supposed to act to make sure this accident won't happen into our workplace? So there is a need for a training, uh, training your people, educating your people, keep them informed, keep them skilled enough to act, act in terms of emergence or to act or to raise their safety culture into their workplace onto the work procedure that they are doing. So you need also to have a training plan, uh, a health, safety and environment training plan for your people or for your employee or for the staffs that uh, you are having at your workplace. And all this need to be subjected to a continuous improvement. Whatever issue, whatever incident that may arise within the process need to be incorporated. So you keep it in um, continuous improvement to, to, end, to continue to check the policy, the procedures, and to review them. And of course, to check if there are some areas need improvement, then you recommend the necessary amendment. And of course, you make sure you incorporate them and then you make sure they are being implemented. So this system is always under continuous improvement. Today you have seen this, tomorrow you have seen this you are incorporating it. The next day you see the other thing, you incorporate them. The aim is to make sure we have a safe working environment because as we said earlier, the safe working environment, it's a key to productivity, to, 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 to the good profit that you are aiming to have at your workplace. But having this all in, in place, Right now, as I said, companies are moving into ESG, environmental, social and governance. So we need also to incorporate the, the environment management or the climate management at your workplace. We need to make sure that we minimize whatever negative impact we can have into our environment. So the company or the system must also explain the initiatives that can be taken or that have been taken by the company to make sure that they maximize the positive contribution to the environment and of course they minimize whatever negative impact can be happening into their environment. 
So a successful HSC management system should include a clear policy to guide workers, uh, safety personnel, and other stakeholders to a safe uh, working environment, to minimizing the environmental damage. And of course, right now we have uh, we have moved from HSC. We have also incorporated the Q, the quality of everything that we are doing into the HSC systems that we are doing. So reaching there, I see, of course, we have like 25 minutes to time. Uh, allow me to finish the session, then I'll be welcoming everyone for their views, uh, questions and comments to add into their session. I hope you allow me to continue. Yes, you yes, can continue. Uh, uh, Judith. Yes, Nyangoro. Uh, I think you you have expounded much up to this juncture. Can mm -hmm. it be true that there is no innovation? Of course, there can be. I'm just requesting if I can proceed till the last, uh, till the end, then I will allow people to put their comments and their contribution to the session. All right, okay, that's, that's good. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, sure. So let's see how some of the standard uh, for HSC management system. We have a uh, international standard for occupational health and safety, ICO 445001, which uh, it's a standard for occupational health and safety management system. It's, uh, of course, explained a lot in terms of HSC systems. And we have also ICO 14000. Uh, this is the standard for environmental, responsible for environmental management system. So it's a, it, it's a specific outline, the gu gui guidelines to help organization focus on how they can reduce the negative impact and of course be responsible to respond to ever changing environmental condition while they maintain the balance and quality operations. But again, these are international standard. In Tanzania, we have OHS Act of 2003, and of course, it's a number of regulations in that. We have the National OHS Policy of 2010, which uh, have a number of HSC. They explain a lot about HSC management system, what you are supposed to incorporate in it, and what you are not supposed to incorporate, what you are supposed to give more detailed information in this. So this one, uh, you can use them as your guideline, as you are preparing your HSC management system at your workplace. But today I would like to see, to, to, I would like us to see some examples of some incidents where um, the HSC management system was not strong enough and we will see what are the causes of those incidents and what are the things to take from those incidents. Probably you might be aware of the Piper Alpha incident, which happened on, it was July 6, 1988. This Piper Alpha, of course, was accounted for 10% of North sea, oil, North sea oil and gas production. But within, with this single incident, it killed 165 men on board. Of course, where part of them, their bodies was never recovered up to date. And of course, two people from the rescue force were killed also. So it's basically 167 men were killed and of course uh, up to 2021 the insured loss from this incident was about 5 million. You can see it's a lot that um, it has been done, it's a lot that uh, has been, it's a great loss that happened to this incident. But let's see, this uh, platform, of course it's an oil and gas uh, production platform, of course it was, uh, it was on North Sea, but this one, basically prior to it was, um, it was constructed for oil. And for the safety reason, uh, the, the modules that were used in the, that oil production and transportation were organized so that the, the most dangerous platform, or what most dangerous operation will be taking place far away from the personnel area. But in 19... Uh, in 1978, uh, they actually changed something where they convert, uh, they converted the system to incorporate the gas production in there. So that's uh, that conversion which took place 
it broke that safety com concept that um, we need to keep the most dangerous platform operation far from people, but with the addition of some modules, then even the the most dangerous operation we are brought close to the people. For example, the gas compression room was next to the control room where people were living in. But now, when they are operating this, because it's an oil and gas platform, they are of course condensate production. Now there are two pumps that we are used to for for condensate, pump A and B. But during the daytime, of course, they had a scheduled uh, maintenance program where the pump A was supposed to go for routine maintenance. But before the pump was was under maintenance, they they had a pressure safety valve into each pump. Pump A had itself uh, its own pressure relief valve and pump B also. So during the daytime, the, the people here were on routine during the daytime, they took off um, a pressure safety valve for pump A for maintenance. And even so the, that area where the PSV was removed, they left a blind flange or a disc to cover that area, but it was hand tightened. It wasn't uh, tightened enough. Now, the day shift ended and of course, the on duty engineer filled uh, a permit which is stated that pump A was not ready and must not be switched under on under any circumstance because they knew that the, that valve is not in place. So the engineer just filled the permit that this pump is not supposed to work under any circumstance. But again, as he was leaving the, the day shift, the on duty custodian was busy. So that engineer neglected, neglected to inform that pump A, on pump A, there was no pressure safety valve and it's not supposed to be switched off. And they handled the shift into that scenario. So he just placed the permit under the control center and he just left the area. And this permit was not found at the time of incident. And again, the other permit was being issued uh, for the overhaul of pump A and that's that permit was not under operation yet, so the process for pump A was not yet begun. And into that scenario, the firefighting system was under manual control. Why? Because uh, the platform was uh, into the middle of the sea, and of course, this firefighting pump was sucking water from the sea, so they put it into manual control to, to, to make sure they protect the divers into that area. But again, it was the night shift where there was no divers into that area. So they were not working into the vicinity of the intakes. So they could turn it automatic, but they decided to, to left it under manual control. So when the night shift came, when they are operating, the pump be tripped and the, of course it could not be restarted. So they are, and the, the way that the platform was configured is if the pump condition or the pump operation was not detected within 30 minutes, then the whole platform will shut down. So the supervisor was trying to determine whether they can start pump A so that the plant will not shut down. But when they are trying to figure out if they can start pump A, passing through the documents, remember that permit for removing pressure safety valve was not in place, so it wasn't found. So they just found the permit that say pump A is and require overhaul, and of course the procedure has not started. So upon seeing that the, the pump A condition was not that bad, they just decided to start pump A. And remember, none of those people presenting into the night shift were aware that the very little part of that machine or of that pump was not in place, it was removed. And they assumed that everything is okay and it started pump A. So upon starting the pump A, of course, due to the overpressure of gas produced there into that blind flange where it was put after removing the PSV, of course, there was a leakage and the first explosion appeared there. In that first gas explosion, it was of course audibly leaky. But before even somebody could act, the, the, before anyone could act, the gas ignited and exploded, 
and of course it's blown the, the, the firewall mod the, it's blown the firewall because this firewall was not des designed to withstand the ex explosion it was meant for oil but now they have gas which explode so it wasn't meant for that it's blown and from there a series of explosion happened and the very bad part in this is that even the people were, who were working into the control room, those um, in managerial position were, who were supposed to, to give out uh, what are they supposed to do into that emergence, of course, they could not withstand the situation. So they were killed, all of them. So there was uh, nobody to give out what is supposed to be done. Uh, there was uh, no strong evacuation plan and emergency plan. Of course, uh, the way it was configured, the control room, it was the center for communication and it was destroyed on the process. So even the communication to communicate with the other nearby platform and see how they can obtain a rescue into that emergency, it was hard. It was made late and a lot of things happened up to the point that uh, 167 men was killed into that scenario and many more were injured into that scenario. So you can see, if you trust down on the causes of this incident, you can understand first there was a safe permit to work because the permit for a pressure safety valve was not kept together with the permit for pump overall. So when people are trying to see what is, uh, if they can set pump A, they couldn't, they couldn't find that permit. So there was unsafe um, PTW, but there was no formal handover procedures. If that engineer who had the permit uh, for removing PS PSV on work, if he could have the formal handover, then the night shift would understand that into this pump, the vital component is missing, but there was no a formal handover and people think everything is fine. And of course, there was no drills, uh, no exercise to, to act in terms of whatever emergency that can happen. That's why in terms of emergency, people could not get out of it. Of course, there was a, no, there was no even a single piece of, uh, of training for disaster management. But again, if once they, they were doing this work, they didn't perform uh, adequate risk assessment. If they would perform adequate risk assessment, they would understand the scenario earlier. But they didn't do it, so they didn't have adequate risk assessment. And of course, with that one, you will understand that even their safety procedures and even their policies wasn't strong enough. Or if it was, it was strong, then people were not following the policy or the procedure for that HSC plan that they kept themselves into their workplace. So what are we supposed to learn from this one? As I said, this uh, was basically initial for oil, and then they had a change to case. Then I will understand that there are some issues into the management of change. So if you are you are subjecting something into the, an improvement, then you need to see the safety part of it, the management of change, the design issues, where they the, it, fully incorporated into the safety system. But again, the emergency response which is among the key elements into the HSC management system. We need to have a strong emergency response into the most dangerous disasters that can be happening to our workplace. But again, the safety culture, they imagined uh, that everything is fine. They can start the pump. These people were not aware, they, they, they did not inspect the whole line to see if there's something wrong before they start. They just imagined that everything is fine. So we need to, to make sure we update our uh, people are being updated are uh, aware are uh, informed are uh, skilled enough and of course they take this as their daily life but even the handover procedures the communication of information between the crews which is uh, one of the first elements to the hsc management system how do we hand over the shift between the crews between the people between this team one and another the flow of information that everyone is aware of what was the condition of the, the the prior work and how they can go to the next work but even the personal safety over the process safety they put uh, the fire water pump manual which they it couldn't help in terms of emergency if it was automatic of course it cannot it could not extinguish the fire 
at, at least it could cool the system and of course increase the time that people can at least evacuate from the area. But the pump was on manual, so for them, they think that protecting, of course, you need to protect the divers, but how do you see it? Protecting one diver and risk uh, 226 people that were on board, or what is the best for that? I think they didn't have um, enough decision in that. And of course, it was in a night shift where even the divers were working um, into very far end from the area. But again, how do we store our, our permits? Isolations and permits for maintenance. We need to, to make sure that one permit is, is finished before we start the other. The pump was not supposed to be started before the maintenance is complete, but there was no flow of information into this one. So these are the key takeaways from this incident. The emergency response, um, the communications, uh, the policy itself, uh, how are people aware, training and education team the people. This was on oil and gas. And, but also we have the Rana Plaza incident. This was a, a garment factory. It's killed, uh, this incident happened in 20, uh, 24th April 2013. And uh, of course it's killed 100, 1,100 people. And even more than this one, this was just what was recorded, but it's, it's even more than this one. But what went wrong to this one? The day before the incident, uh, the workers, of course, they they see, of course, they, they noticed that there are cracks appeared into the building. Of course, it was a building having, um, it was originally four stories building, but it was added another four, uh, another four floors, which were not into that scenario. And this building was, of course, planned for commercial use, and it was turned to industrial without, um, a further study on how effective and how strong it can be. So they added uh, four floors and then they turned it to industrial use where they placed the machines, the heavy machines, the generators into the buildings without seeing how strong it is, the structure integrity of that building. And initially it was built into the, it was built into, into the pond environment which of course compromised the structure integrity of that building. Now, when they noticed the crack, the garment workers, because the, the floors uh, the, from first floor to fourth floor, these were normal shops and whatever. Those, sh those shops, after they noticed, they closed their works and evacuated. But the first fourth to eighth floor, they couldn't evacuate the garment workers. Once they presented that information to their man managerial positions, of course, the owners relayed that uh, the building was safe. Uh, of course, the engineers did inspection and, and said that the, the building was structurally sound. And the next morning, which it was the morning of the incident, of course, the workers were uh, continuing to express their concern about the safety of that building. The cracks were increasing uh, and everything. But the management told them they have to be there. They have to make sure they work and they even threatened to threat, threaten their job and their salary if they refuse to work. But early in that work day, in less than nine, 90 seconds, the whole building, the eight story building collapsed and it killed this number of people, 1,100 uh, 1, workers into that building. So you can see, first they had the substandard, substandard construction material, they had poor management of change, changing the building from commercial to industrial, adding four floors without um, original building permits, um, they had a poor HSC policy because in the policy you need the leadership commitment, but the leaders were not committed enough. The leaders were not committed enough. They threatened the people to continue with work when they understand that this is wrong and there are some 
things that are not okay within the buildings, but they had to threaten the people. So their commitment wasn't good enough for that area. But again, you will find that there was no drills and exercise within that factory, that there was no a strong uh, practice that how will people supposed to act in terms of emergence. That's why once they see the cracks are increasing, they couldn't do anything. People are in a panic mode while well, they could evacuate safely, but they were in a panic mode because they never had such a things. They are never had such a training. They were not skilled enough to act in terms of that. But there are also no evacuation plan to respond to that. There was no risk assessment, effective risk assessment that was being done. But one of all the L1 signs were being ignored. The commitment and accountability of those leaders were not we are not enough. Of course, this building, there is no way that it 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 will be not um, it will not collapse. But again, seeing that there are some signs, there are some warning signs, and ignoring that, that is what killed a lot of people. Those people into the shops and banks into the down floors, they evacuated safely. But this one who ignored the signs are the ones who have been killed. So this is, is something has something to tell us as we prepare our um, as we prepare our management system. Don't overlook anything. You need to check them to check and balance each and everything to make sure that you have a stable and working uh, okay. HSC management system. Up to there, I think we have had enough for today. I welcome if there is any questions, um, probably two to three questions before I close the session. Nyangoro, the session is on you now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Judith. I hope we have uh, gotten much from the presentation. Uh, the presentation has been uh, very good, I suppose, because uh, the presenter is really very good at what she was presenting, so I hope you have gotten um, some good points out of the presentation. I would like to thank you all um, for, for... Before we wind up, if Ms. Judith has anything to say before we close. So, I understand might be a need for of course, continuous uh, understanding of the procedures of sharing knowledge. So if you like, you can join our group. As it can see uh, into the, the my screen that I shared, there's a QR code in there. So if you scan it, you, it will direct you to our group where you will be getting the knowledge uh, that you, if you have anything you need to understand, then we'll be there to answer you or if you have any inquiry that you want to make, we'll be there to help you. So you can just scan this, the QR code and it will direct you direct to the group. Otherwise, I thank you all for being with us today. I hope the session has been productive. I hope we have got something to learn, of course, and my wish is that we utilize this what we have got to make our safe working environments. That's all for today. Thank you all for joining.